In this video, I'm going to be looking at the AA. No, not Britain's yellowest road fight assistant service, but the abdominal aorta. In particular, I want to look at the branches that leave the aorta, focusing on where they come from and where they go. I'll be drawing them out on this illustration here. So at the top, we have the diaphragm, with the vertebral levels of the body coming down. We then have some structures that receive their blood supply from the aorta. So on the left, we have a kidney, with a suprarenal gland up top. Down here we have a gonad, which is just the general term for the organs that produce reproductive cells, so the ovaries in females, or the testes in males. On the other side is the gut tube, the channel that runs from mouth to south, taking food through the body and digesting it along the way. The abdominal aorta starts by passing through the diaphragm at T12 travelling through an opening known as the aortic hiatus. It then travels down the abdominal wall until it reaches L4, at which point it divides into left and right common iliac arteries. These continue to supply structures in the pelvis and lower limb, but I'll look at those another time. For now I want to concentrate on the branches that leave the aorta directly. These branches can be split into three main groups. First we have the parietal vessels. These are small paired arteries that come off at every vertebral level to supply the body wall and diaphragm. So heading up to the underside of the diaphragm are the inferior phrenic arteries. We also have subcostal arteries that leave at T12 and run just below the ribs. Finally the lumbar arteries leave the aorta at every level between L1 and L4. Now obviously I'd recommend you learn everything I tell you, but if you are going to forget anything from this video, I'd make it the branches. They're useful to know, but they're not as vital as some of the other branches that we're going to see. The next group are the paired visceral arteries. These supply organs that lie on both sides of the body, although I've only drawn them on the left to help make our illustration a bit clearer. So between L1 and L2 are the renal arteries that supply the kidneys. Remember the aorta lies just to the left of the midline, for the right renal artery will be slightly longer than the left. Just above this are small branches that head to the gland on top of the kidney, the middle suprarenal arteries. Now if you're wondering why these are called the middle suprarenal arteries, it's because they fit between two other suprarenal branches. The superior suprarenal comes down from the inferior phrenic, whilst the inferior suprarenal if a branch of the renal artery. The final paired vessels go to the gonads. In general we can refer to them as the gonadal arteries, but if you want to be more specific, ovarian arteries supply the ovaries, and testicular arteries supply the testes. Whatever their destination, they leave the aorta at the same level, L2, and I remember this because ideally we should have two gonads. The final group consists of three unpaired arteries that supply the gut tube. Now embryologically the gut tube is split into three sections, the foregut, midgut and hindgut. Each of these regions is primarily supplied by a single branch of the aorta. So coming off at T12, just below the diaphragm, the celiac axis passes to the foregut. The superior mesenteric artery supplies the midgut and leaves the aorta at L1. The hindgut, meanwhile, receives most of its blood from the inferior mesenteric artery, and this originates for L3. For now I'd just learn which portion of the gut tube each vessel supplies, but if you want to know more about the branches of these vessels, or their venous drainage, you can find a playlist of some other videos in the description below. So, those are the major branches of the abdominal aorta. If you have any questions, please just get in touch, but otherwise thank you for watching, Take care and I'll hopefully see you soon.